All right, Legion writes another, asks another question. Jonathan, how do you find balance from sharing enough of your past to let another understand my background and not let them use it against me later uh, two years if we're in the middle of a disagreement? <laughs> You know, it's funny, I'm reading this and I'm reminded of my ex-wife and she was an elephant. I swear to God, she could remember every word I ever said in the 15 years we knew each other, or we were in relationship with one another, uh, 12 and a half of that was marriage. Um, and, and she would definitely use my words against me. It is a very human thing to use our words against one another. So to the extent that's a very immature way of approaching relationships. And yet it's a very human way, especially when we're heated in a fight, especially when we're feeling angry, especially when we're feeling um, unappreciated. It is very common to do that. So this isn't really an issue of sharing about your past. And by the way, I do have a video coming out shortly on that. But here's the thing I'm so... I'm a big believer of vulnerability, authenticity, and transparency. I'm going to repeat that, vulnerability, authenticity, and transparency. And I'm a believer of being rather forthright earlier rather than later to see if two people are on, on the same page, to see if two people are on the same page. So I have a confession. Um, uh, just a couple, was it yesterday, I had a telephone call with a woman who happened to recognize me. She, so she, she wrote me on my match profile. She recognized me. And while she's a long distance relationship and I'm not necessarily sure I'm interested, we end up just getting on the phone and chatting. And since, since I was in a, you know, I was actually in a place of, of what Tom Cruise in the movie Risky Business said, I was in a what the fuck moment. In other words, what the fuck? In other words, like, I'm not gonna care about the outcome if I'm from the premise of being vulnerable, authentic, and transparent. What I mean by not care is I wasn't going to allow the fact that in a moment I was going to share with her some very vulnerable things about me. I felt safe enough myself to share some vulnerable things. So we played a game of 20 questions and it was like, we, I shared, I asked her a question and, and I asked some deal breaker questions, some really core value deal breaker questions. And I invite, so she, I asked a question, she asked a question, she asked a question, I asked a question. We went back and forth. We ended up talking, well, a couple hours, it seemed like. Um, but the thing is, it's, we started to check the bot. We started to eliminate the, the things I was asking was trying to get the deal breaker questions asked on very early on. Now, uh, we do plan on meeting because she happens to be coming into town. I have no expectation of what's going to happen because, um, you know, I, I'm typically not interested in a long distance relationship, but I, I'm also a friendly person. And when you make kind of a new friend, I think it's appropriate to me or it can be appropriate to me. So my point in sharing this is I'm a big proponent of sharing vulnerable things. And she actually shared something very vulnerable with me that several years prior, she was rather overweight and she went through a regiment of losing weight. And the reason why she shared this with me, because there might be some photographs of her that I might see at you know, some point. I didn't want, she didn't want me to freak out. And I, I really appreciated her vulnerability in sharing that with me. Folks, I'm a big proponent. Certainly, I'm not going to share every secret, secret that I have in my life with someone brand new. I'm not a big believer of that. I believe that trust is a personal thing, an inner thing. In other words, I don't put my faith in others for trust. I put my faith in myself. So I divulge what feels safe for me. And my invitation when it comes to our, our for lack of a better word, our baggage, our luggage, our past, I think it's important to feel safe within yourself. And one of the things I was vulnerable with her happened to be about the loss of my son. And I got very, I got very emotional over that. And, and as a man, that could be a sign of weakness. Would I, so why would you want to demonstrate weakness, Jonathan, on a first phone call? Because I don't believe it's be, being vulnerable isn't weakness. I believe vulnerability is strength. And if you're not familiar with the work of Brene Brown, 
I highly recommend getting the book Daring Greatly by Brene Brown, Daring Greatly. And one of the things she talks about is vulnerability is the true essence of courage. Let me repeat that. Vulnerability is the true essence of courage. And so I'm a big proponent of speaking your truth, just like chapter one in my book, Speak Your Truth, do it with kindness. And chapter nine states, if it's sincere and from the heart, if it's from a heart center place, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. So could the sharing that come back and haunt you later? Absolutely. But you know what? That's just part of human nature. But Jonathan, only narcissists do things like that. Oh my God, how many times have I heard the bullshit narrative that everything is about narcissism? Folks, everything isn't about narcissism. I recently took a test on narcissism and I failed on it. Eight out of eight things I've done because if we parse parts of our lives, we all have selfish behavior. We all have stuff that can be inconsiderate. The most important thing is, are you grown up to handle mature conversations? Do you take responsibility for your choices? Do you know how to fight fair? Are you, um, do your actions match your words? Are you vulnerable, authentic, and transparent? And do you have a level of empathy? So I'm here to say, folks, trust yourself when it comes to sharing your past. Know what's, what is, no. by the way, you certainly don't wanna share something that you don't want on social media the next day, but certainly share what's vulnerable to you because honestly, intimacy is how we connect with another human being. Intimacy, into me you see. I'm gonna find a book here. Uh, where is it? Bear with me, folks. Uh, where is that book? Uh, of course, I can't find it when I want it. Um, the book is called Oral Sex. Here we go. Oral Sex. Oral sex, talking and listening your way to passionate intimacy. Folks, there is a distressing lack of intimacy in the relationship process. And if you want to build greater intimacy with your partner, then I highly recommend reading this book, How to Make Love All the Time by Barbara DeAngelis, instead of this book, The Rules, which is all short-term manipulative ways to, to hook a guy temporarily until he disappears because bullshit manipulativeness doesn't work. So to end on this note, Weijin, I'm here to suggest be vulnerable, authentic, and transparent to whatever feels comfortable and safe for you and recognize we're all gonna use shit against one another. That's what happens when you get angry and I wouldn't get too upset about it. Great question. Thank you so much for that. Truly appreciate it. All right.